Lena Sandgren, Oscar-winning cinematographer whose new project is No Time to Die, out now in theaters. Uh, Lena, this is this is the fifth and final James Bond film for Daniel Craig. Your first Bond movie. These his his series of films obviously like really had a lot of connective tissue between them. I guess I wanted to talk when you came into this project, the look you wanted to do for No Time to Die. Did you try to keep it in conversation with the previous films, or did you start of like kind of like just start from scratch and like kind of like what was your, what was your initial thought about it uh yeah no we started from scratch i mean i had discussions with kerry um early on about what is the essence of sort of the bond genre in general and and where where we we want to live with it and uh kerry was uh, very much into making uh, you know an, a film uh, being an adventure and escapistic uh, journey that just should be, um, you know, as, uh, as as close to the heart of Bond as possible, what we felt was the heart of Bond. So we started to, you know, explore that. But um, what he um, sort of talked to me about a lot was to create a journey that was just a very dramatic journey from, from the most brutal to the most intimate and, um, and, and emotional. So... I think always when you start a film, you need to like uh, find the language for the film. And in this case, it's it was a lot a lot about sort of this journey of um, of a roller coaster uh, in emotions. Yeah, that's that's really great. It is it is interesting because you're right. There's so many incredibly big set pieces, and then you, I think you get to do a lot of obviously emotional scenes that are I, I think unique for for the Bond franchise certainly. Yeah, and that was that's. Uh, yeah, it's really, really cool. You, you I wanted to, you start it like the roller coaster kind of starts at the at a peak almost because the opening sequence is such a big uh, action scene in, in Italy. Uh, you have this incredible car chase and motorcycle chase. I, I love the way you're able to, and the film uses the actual location. I, can you talk a little about like how you guys thought about that opening sequence and, you know, like how much was it you like looking for the perfect spot in Matera, Italy versus like, you know, like I, I'd love to hear about that and like how you guys kind of accomplished that. So uh, from basically from scene to scene, um, it was, it, it was interesting to think about, you know, connecting obviously the locations to what was going on emotionally in the film. And, and the film actually starts in the winter, right? Like in this, ice cold winter and that part of the story uh, of the film is is sort of uh, told in a in a kind of a suspenseful uh, thriller uh, way with where we felt like the the visuals should be connected to those emotions in in that storyline and then you cut to a very romantic setting in Italy and what was curious and interesting was I think that um, that town that we uh, found in Italy had not only both the sort of the romantic picturesque qualities that fit very well for the beginning of that uh, sequence, uh, but it also were made in stone so that it would be a very hard uh, location to sort of have action sequences within. And therefore that location I thought was uh, really um, a beautiful spot because it, it could give us first, you know, the, the romantic Italy, and then it could we could throw the audience straight into a very brutal uh, and hard action. And I think throughout the film, we always considered uh, the locations and the the time of day and the lighting and um, and the colors of the the locations to be connected with um, part to be connected with the sort of the, the mood we wanted to achieve in these scenes and uh, which was very close connected with the emotions of the scenes and 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 then also that uh, we got a good variation of location so that we we would cut from a cold to a warm or from a, a colorful blue night to a red uh, interior uh, so we we got a lot of like we wanted to to sort of we wanted to feel like the film took place all over the world and that it was sort of an escapistic type of journey that we got to, to be with, we, we, we would get to be with Bond in this um, sort of amazing journey. But um, um, uh, within that, uh, you know, you have, um, oh, sorry, now I lost it. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, I don't know. Did I finish that yeah. well or? No, that's okay. That was that's good. I, I, you mentioned like this. Obviously, it's, no, it's good. It, obviously, it's a globe-spanning production. Uh, it's also massive. Uh, you know, you had worked previously with IMAX on on First Man. This movie, it feels like. I mean. I, I venture to say half of the movie maybe is an IMAX and shot in IMAX. How did that affect like what you wanted to do visually and, you know, the challenges of, I know obviously those cameras are so big and everything. How did that, like, how did you work with that and kind of like figure out when you wanted to deploy the IMAX technology, let's say? Yeah. So first of all, um, part of our discussions in what is, who, what is a Bond movie? Like what was the heart of Bond? And part of that felt like we should work in an anamorphic 35 um, environment. Like the whole film is basically an uh, anamorphic 35, but but with the also idea of maximizing uh, the the you know the moviegoers experience, um, we felt that going wider or actually taller uh, would help for certain sequences. So that's why we deployed IMAX, which. Then in uh, in a in, in the largest IMAX theaters you would see it in one four three but in the two four zero you have the two four zero in the in the film but in those sequences it would just open up below your your feet to to you know to 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 get you even more immersed into the image and have the image completely surrounding you and um, I mean we were fortunate enough to uh, be able to work with those cameras and and. Um, I think um, it's a matter of sort of just being more engulfed into the image. And we just had that uh, throughout the film that um, as, as much as we wanted to be wide like that, we also then in other scenes went very intimate and uh, close. And, and another thing uh, was also that um, we really wanted to experience everything through Bond. So we, in a lot of, um, time of the film in those action sequences we also didn't want to like go to extra dramatic uh, crazy um, um, unrealistic stunts but everything should feel very realistic and as if it happened for real and that we felt felt the brutality very intimate with bond so in a lot of those sequences too we we just um, you know spend a lot of time very close to him uh, in those action sequences as well yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, I wanted to ask you about one of those towards the end of the film. There's an incredible one shot up up the steps uh, that he's dispatching mm. bad guys. It's such a it's such a thrilling scene because it just is like I, as a viewer, you're kind of like realizing that there are no cuts and how yeah. choreographed and complicated it is. It's it's so exciting. I, can you talk a little about like setting that shot? You know, thinking about that and executing that sequence because it is really a, a showstopper, as it were. Right. Well, part of that uh, end sequence uh, that you're talking about, that part is uh, is also sort of a kind of metaphoric about his um, uh, journey walking up the, the staircase, uh, just hitting uh, uh, villains along the way, right? But he's trying to reach the top. He's trying to climb up to the top and he's being shot at. It's very metaphoric, I think, for the film when you've seen it. But um, uh, and so that was important. It was important. It was going to be the most, he had already gone through so much and he had been like uh, shot at and been fighting throughout the movie. And this is like, he's already, he's even hurt and he gets up the, uh, the staircase um, uh, through, through all this fire. And, and it's, it's quite, um, it was quite important for us that that was going to be a one take uh, because because when you do one takes, even in other films, like when I did in La La Land, we did one takes, it's all about like really making sure that people know that we're there. Like uh, you're not like um, uh, cutting around things, you're actually there. And, and so we, we, we have to walk up the staircase with him, uh, handheld. Um, it's, it's like, I think you always find your language for the film, but you also find the language for the scenes. And uh, I think you always have to be careful about uh, why is it a dolly shot or why is it a handheld shot? In our language, handheld in this film was when Bond was sort of not stable. And in other sequences, when Bond is very much in control or someone is in control, we use dolly shots or, or moves or crane moves that were more smooth. Um, and so our language was that um, when he was unstable, we always shot handheld. So we, we, wouldn't, we would feel, it, the idea was that we, 
the audience should also feel like that this could go really wrong. And um, yeah, so that was a complicated shot to, uh, to do because uh, we knew we wanted to go up with him, but as you know, there's the camera and the focus puller has to walk around in, a, in an environment that is also has to light the actor without shadowing him, et cetera. So it was kind of a complicated logistically um, to set it up, but um, I'm very happy with that sequence being like for, for the, for the story of it. Like when he goes up that staircase, it's a, it's a tough journey. Yeah. Yeah. How many, I'm, I, we have to wrap up here, but how many times did you have to do that sequence to get it? Uh, I actually don't remember, but I know that we had to uh, reset overnight in order to come back. I think we shot it twice only, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, inc it's incredible. We rehearsed it, so. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, incredible scene, and like you said, I think it really does tie thematically to, to the film itself. Uh, Lena Sangren, cinematographer for No Time to Die uh, in okay. theaters now. Thank you so much.